Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. All patients on crizotinib will eventually relapse and that's due to acquired resistance. So there's been a real um, effort to understand resistance and to try and overcome that resistance with new and more potent ALK inhibitors. Ceritinib is uh, one of the first of the next generation ALK inhibitors. Uh, it was developed by Novartis and it is very potent against ALK. It's likely in the range of 10 to 20 fold more potent against ALK than crizotinib. It also is more selective for ALK compared to crizotinib. It does not have any activity against CMET, for example. And in preclinical studies now, we've seen that ceritinib is able to overcome many of the known resistance mutations. So this includes L1196M, which is the gatekeeper mutation, and G1269A, another common mutation. So it seems all the preclinical studies were really, I think, promising that ceritinib would show efficacy in patients who had failed on crizotinib. And in fact, this is what we saw in the phase one study. Uh, this was a global study of uh, ceritinib in patients with ALK positive lung cancer. Most of them had already failed crizotinib. And what we saw is that in this crizotinib resistant group of ALK positive patients, ceritinib was very active with a response rate of about 55% and a median PFS of close to seven months. So many patients, even though they had failed crizotinib, were able to re-respond to this new and more potent ALK inhibitor. So this has now become actually a standard agent for patients who have failed on crizotinib. It was approved by the FDA about a year and a half ago, and it's been approved also by a number of other regulatory agencies around the world. And so this has really led to this new treatment paradigm for ALK patients where they receive crizotinib as their first-line therapy, and then when they have a relapse on crizotinib, they move on to a next-generation ALK inhibitor like ceritinib. That was the phase one data. We also now have some data from phase two studies. So these are follow-up global confirmatory phase two studies of ceritinib in ALK positive patients. One of them was also done in the crizotinib resistant setting. And here the efficacy wasn't as striking as what we saw in the phase one, but it was fairly good still with the response rate in the 40 to 50% range um, and the median PFS in the six to seven month range. So slightly less um, uh, like I said, less remarkable than what we saw in the phase one, but still confirming the activity of this next generation ALK inhibitor as being a very active agent in uh, crizotinib resistant disease. Ceritinib has been explored as a single agent in patients who've both been not previously treated for ALK positive lung cancer or those patients who've had prior crizotinib for their ALK positive lung cancer. In those patient populations, ceritinib has shown significant efficacy with response rates above 50% for patients who have had prior uh, crizotinib as well as those who have not had prior crizotinib. Median progression-free survivals are on the order of um, 7 to 12 months for those patients who have uh, previously received crizotinib and then go on to ceritinib. So I think this is really a significant second-line option for our patients who have had prior crizotinib. The side effects that we've seen so far for patients who are treated with ceritinib are typically uh, GI-related side effects, so um, some uh, dyspepsia, some nausea, and occasional patient with diarrhea. But these are all quite manageable with the doses that are described, and dose reductions can help significantly for those patients. Moving ceritinib forward, one of the key things is to do some randomized clinical trials, and there are two big randomized clinical trials that are ongoing. One explores the use of ceritinib as a first-line ALK inhibitor. And so they're taking patients who are initially diagnosed with advanced ALK positive lung cancer and randomizing them to initial ceritinib or treatment with cisplatin or carboplatin along with pemetrexid. Uh, these would consider, be considered the, the standard platinum-based doublet in this setting and comparing that to ceritinib. Uh, so I think it's going to be really exciting to look at the results of that and understand how ceritinib's progression-free and overall survival compares uh, to those patients who receive conventional chemotherapy as first-line therapy. In the second-line setting, there's a similar trial going on, and this second-line trial will take patients who have ALK-positive lung cancer who've been previously treated with a platinum-based doublet, and then they're randomized to either ceritinib or treatment with docetaxel or pemetrexid, depending on the prior therapy they've had. Uh, this will really establish the role of ceritinib as a second-line uh, drug, particularly for patients with ALK-positive non-small cell lung cancer.
Seretinib is a second generation ALK inhibitor. Um, it was initially studied in a combination of crizotinib pretreated patients as well as uh, treatment naive patients. Um, its uh, initial emphasis was on crizotinib pretreated patients because crizotinib was approved for the treatment of uh, ALK positive patients. So we needed a second line choice, if you will. Uh, in these patients, seritinib showed uh, response rates of in the range of 50 to 65 percent in previously treated patients, reasonable durability with uh, you know, re uh, progression-free survival times in the 8 to 10 month range, um, good tolerability. Uh, the primary uh, side effects of uh, seritinib uh, are namely GI toxicities, nausea, vomiting, and liver function abnormalities. Um, however, with careful attention to dose, um, and uh, dose reductions and, and those sorts of strategies, which most oncologists are familiar with. Uh, seritinib um, is a well-tolerated agent and very useful because it was the first uh, second-generation TKI approved for the use in patients who were progressing on crizotinib, the first-line choice. Uh, seritinib does have activity in previously untreated patients. Its activity is a little better if you weren't prior exposed to crizotinib. Um, however, it's, it's um, uh, in, in, in my mind, a very important approval because it, it gave you a second option in the ALK population rather than diverting to uh, standard intravenous chemotherapy options. These patients uh, who had perhaps been on crizotinib for quite some time kind of got used to taking a pill a day dealing with those sorts of side effects which are quite different than IV chemotherapy, seritinib approval gave them uh, an option. Certainly in my practice, it was a welcomed approval because we uh, could delay um, the kind of discussion in the um, organization and intrusiveness intravenous chemotherapy does to a patient um, uh, in their quality of life. Uh, this addition was actually quite uh, quite uh, important in the management of patients uh, in a busy lung cancer practice.